Once you have your electric motor and room for it in the motorcycle, you're going to need a motor adapter plate. Now what that does is it physically connects the electric motor to the frame of the motorcycle. And of course, location is important. You want to get your motor as close as you can to that same original location that the drive sprocket on the original transmission was. Now, if you originally marked on the frame of the cycle before you took the transmission out, such as these marks here and here, that will help you figure out exactly where you need the motor to go now. Now, another thing you want to do is instead of trying to hold up the motor there and figure out exactly where you want it to go, you could instead download a PDF or an info sheet for your electric motor. In this case, I've got one right here that this is a, uh, uh, it's information about the motor. It has the torque curve, um, the range of speeds at different voltages, and also an image of the motor itself. Now, if you take this, on your computer, through pretty much any imaging program, you can blow it up to life size. Since there's these marks on here saying exactly how big things are, you can use those to make sure that you get that sizing correct. So, you'll be able to make something like this. And this is going to be useful as a template for figuring out the space and where you're going to put the motor. So if I took this printout and then I just cut it out, I now have a simple paper template of my electric motor that I can use to figure out where exactly the motor is going to go and how to mount it. So just for example, if I hold it up right about here, it looks like that's just about the perfect location for the motor. It fits in nicely between the frame and the space that I need for the batteries. So if we just take our piece of paper template, we could then tape it down onto say, piece of scrap cardboard. So now we've got something that it's a little bit more rigid, it's a little bit easier to work with. And then on top of that, we can also draw on there. So what we can do is wherever we need uh, attachment points coming off of it, we can just draw those right on there on top of uh, the motor pattern. I also want to point out that I have removed the chain guard on here just to make it easier to show the adapter plate down here. But of course, anytime we're working on the electric motorcycle, we want to absolutely make sure that it's both off and that the batteries are disconnected. Now, when you're working on this, you won't even have the batteries hooked up yet, but just as a general rule of thumb, we always want to keep that in mind. So let's take a look on the other side of the motorcycle for where we're going to put those attachment points. So on this side, we're mostly coming over here for a little bit better view, where we can see that already here, here, and here are existing mounting points for the engine and transmission. So let's take a look at our little template, see if we can get it in here to mark some tabs that are going to go to some of these points. Now the other thing, is here and here will make great uh, attachment points and that'll keep the motor from being able to rotate this way but it's still going to be able to go kind of twang this way a bit and we really need a mounting point around here somewhere and there's really no good spot on the frame for it so what we'll do instead is we'll make a third attachment point that goes to the rail here of the battery rack so i'm going to cut this down to be able to fit it in here a little bit better so a quick snip of the scissors means that I can now fit this down in here and I can look at where we've got those attachment points and then just make sure to include them as part of my template here. So something like that should fit just fine. Uh, keep in mind, you do want to be fairly accurate about these two points. Without the motor actually in there, that's pretty easy to measure and mark correctly. So once you've done this uh, mock-up of your plate out of some cardboard, um, now it doesn't have to be perfect at this place, I just kind of sketched it on there. In the end though, you do want to make sure that where the holes for the threaded rod to go through are accurate because that's going to determine the exact positioning 
of where the motor is. So you want to double check that on the drive side of your motorcycle to make sure that drive shaft is just where you want it to be. But once you get this exactly how you want it, you could transfer it onto hardboard or some other material to make a, a jig or a template to make your metal piece from. Alternatively, you could also uh, put this piece directly onto a piece of metal with either painter's tape or maybe even some rubber cement. Now what I did for my, my motor plate was I used a quarter inch aluminum plate, uh, partly because it's something I already had around and it's easy to work with. It's pretty easy to drill through and to cut. The other thing that's nice about aluminum is it doesn't rust. This is an outdoor vehicle and I wanted something as corrosion resistant as possible. In addition, the shell, the housing of the motor itself is also aluminum. So if I put aluminum against aluminum, that's pretty good. But sometimes if you put one type of metal directly up against another type of metal, uh, that's where you get a little bit of extra corrosion there because of that. Now that's not to say that you can't use steel instead of aluminum. In fact, if you look at this motorcycle, that's using a steel plate to hold the motor in position. And in that case, that steel plate can then be welded directly to the frame of the motorcycle. Nothing wrong with doing that either, but you do need to be a pretty good welder and you need to make sure that you get it in exactly the right spot on the first time. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is when your plate is ready and you put it in there, you're going to run threaded rod through the frame, through the plate, and through the other end of the frame, securing both ends of that threaded rod with nuts. And then you're also going to have a nut on either side of the adapter plate. So those nuts that are right up against the motor mounting plate are still going to allow you to move the plate a little bit. All you have to do is loosen them. You can slide the plate one way or another so that in the end, the drive sprocket on the motor is in perfect alignment with the driven sprocket in the back. Here's that third point of attachment. It comes up behind the mounting plate and then connects to that frame rail. That way we have at least three points of attachment and they cover all three axes of rotation. Um, at this point, you can now put the motor onto the plate, put the four mounting bolts through and torque those down. Now, just one last thing to keep in mind, use stainless steel washers. Not only are they corrosion resistant, but they're non-magnetic. Most of the permanent magnet motors are ventilated and some of them have slots that are exactly big enough to drop a washer in. And if you're using a standard steel washer, the permanent magnets are gonna suck that up and you will never, ever, ever get that out without dis disassembling the entire motor. Don't ask me how I know this one. Just use stainless steel washers. Then all you have to do is just torque down the bolts using the recommendations that are with on your motor information. Thank you.